Hi everyone, it's Dr. Bishop here again. In this video, we're going to go over an introduction to critical appraisal. Let's go back to what you've learned so far. In the past four sessions in class, you have learned how to assess clinical situations, ask PICO questions, and acquire evidence from data sources. You also have video of the anatomy of a research article. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the process of critically appraising an article. You are going to go through this process of critical appraisal in the next three class sessions when we go over how to read an article about therapy, how to read an article about diagnosis, and how to read a meta-analysis. For each topic, you will answer three questions to appraise an article. First, are the results of the study valid? Second, what are the results? And third, how can I apply the results to patient care? Let's take a closer look at each of these three steps. First off, are the results valid? What do we mean by this? This question asks whether the researchers did the study in such a way that they controlled for bias, or put more simply, can we believe the results? The key tool that we use to determine whether the results are valid is a validity criteria checklist. Over the next three sessions, you will use a validity criteria checklist to determine the validity of a study about therapy, a study about diagnosis, and a meta-analysis. We'll provide you with the checklist, but if you want to find, out, find them on your own, you can go to the JAMA Evidence website. If you go to the JAMA Evidence User's Guide to the Literature website and go to the right-hand sidebar, you can see all the critical appraisal worksheets. Let's take a look at the therapy worksheet because it's the first one that you're going to use in this course. This worksheet, like all the others, is a checklist of things you want to look for in an article to make sure the researchers took steps to reduce bias. Most of the information that you need to do in the checklist is available in the method section of each article. Again, we will look at the individual checklists in depth in future sessions. The next step in critical appraisal is to interpret the results. Just as each type of study has different validity criteria, each type of study also has different ways of describing the results. The two key questions about the results are what are the size of the effect and how precise are the findings. Again, each study has different ways of describing the results. For example, a study comparing a new therapy with a placebo or no, or no therapy uses terms like absolute risk reduction, relative risk reduction, and number needed to treat to describe the treatment effect. A study comparing a new diagnostic test to what we call the gold standard test will use terms like sensitivity, specificity, and likelihood ratio. Again, we'll look at result interpretation over the next few sessions. The final step in the process is applying the results to patients. The questions in deciding whether to apply the results to your patient are, first, are the results generalizable? What is the net impact? and what are the value and preferences of my patient? The first question asks whether your patient is similar to the patients in the study. For example, if you reviewed a study that looked at the effect of a therapy in Caucasian patients in a European country, but you are making treatment decisions for an African American patient, you may question whether the stu study results can really be applied to your patient. The second question asks you to weigh the risks and benefits for example, if you find a positive effect of a medication, but it has a high risk of a dangerous side effect, you may not want to use that medication. The final question asks you to carefully consider each individual patient. For example, if you read an article that describes a medication that prolongs life expectancy in patients with cancer, but the patient you are treating has decided to forego life-prolonging therapy and instead focus on treatments that improve her quality of life, you probably won't apply the results of this study to that particular patient. Now that you've learned the three steps to critical appraisal, we're going to practice applying these three steps 
to real clinical questions and real research articles. It's going to be an intense ride with a lot of learning and a lot of practicing, but critically appraising the medical literature is a lifelong skill that you will use over and over again as you come to progress through medical school and when you become a practicing doctor. The next session is going to be on how to read an article about therapy.